Hello, everybody. Today, we're going to be presenting on Martha Rogers, Science of Unitary Human Beings. Our group consists of Miss Bean, Miss Trejo, Miss Trin, Miss Olivia, Mr. Wells, and Miss White. So let's begin. What is this theory? The theory examines human coexistence and their surroundings and how both influence the change for their well being. In other words, when addressing the health and the care plan of the patient, patient and his or her surroundings cannot be separated. Hi, my name is Olivia, and I'll be talking about how were the concept of health, person, nursing, and environment explicated. So, health. Rogers defines health as an expression of the life process. Health is the characteristics and behavior coming from the mutual, simultaneous interaction of the human and environmental fields, and health and illness are a part of the same continuum. The multiple events occurring during the life process show how a person is achieving his or her maximum health potential. The events vary in their expressions from the most significant health to those incompatible with the maintaining life process. Nursing. Nursing is a study of unitary, irreducible, indivisible human and environmental fields, people and their world. Rogers claims that nursing exists to serve people and the safe practice of nursing knowledge the nurse brings to their practice. How are the concept of health, person, nursing, environmental explicated continued? So the person, nursing aims to assist people in achieving their maximum health potential, maintenance and promotion of health, prevention of disease, Nursing diagnosis, intervention, and rehab encompass the scope of nursing's goals. Nursing is concerned with all people, well, sick, rich, poor, young, and old. The nursing areas extend to areas where there are people, home, school, work, play, hospitals, nursing homes, and clinics. Nursing focuses on not only our planet, but even into our outer space as well. Environment. An irreducible, indivisible, pan-dimensional energy field identified by pattern and integral with the human field. Patients can participate knowingly in the process of change. The environment is also irreducible and coexists with unitary human beings, that is, the environment um, and the patient are one. What unique definitions, terms, concepts were identified in the theory and were these explained? American theorist Martha Rogers defined pan-dimensional as a non-linear domain without spatial or temporal attributes. She further noted that pan-dimensional reality transcends space or time so that one can understand its perceived boundaries. An example one can utilize for this term pan-dimensional would be paranormal. Pan-dimensional is a real moment without limitations that we as humans want to implement on them. One can feel that Martha Rogers did explain this term well and made it clear. Martha Rogers explains that the parameters that we use in our language description of these events are arbitrary and that the present is relative. What are strengths and weaknesses of this theory? One of the stronger points in Martha Rogers' theory is that patients are affected by their environments. Where and how the patient is while getting treatment affects their outcome and can encourage healing. This can be proven by the patient's positive progress and is certainly testable in principle by offering an alternative to more traditional approaches. A weakness that can be found in her theory is that she does not have one particular hypothesis. It does not have a specific nursing approach. Martha Rogers also fails to define the nurse's role in this theory, just that the environment and the patients affect one another. Additionally, the theory is hard to test and obtain evidence because the concepts are not directly numerical measurable. My name is Jacob Wells, and I'm going to be talking more about Martha Rogers' Science of Unitary Human Beings. Now, in developing this theory, Martha Rogers postulated four separate concepts, the first of which is the energy field, which describes the fundamental unit of living and non-living entities. People and environments are both considered energy fields and they're both infinite and ever-changing. The second concept is openness, which describes the universe without boundaries. The only boundaries that exist within this universe are the ones that we as energy fields impose upon it. The third concept is pattern, 
which describes the process of continuous change. And the fourth concept, as pre previously mentioned by Antonia, is pendimensionality, which ex describes the energy fields existing in a nonlinear format. And these four concepts contribute to the principles further derived from the science of unitary, unitary human beings. One principle is homeodynamics, which expresses the constancy of universal change with three separate principles. The first of those is residency, which is continuous change from lower to higher frequency wave patterns, just like in sound, low frequency, high frequency, but there's a continuous change in that residency. Number two is helicy, which is the increasing diversity of human environmental field patterns. So no one field is ever the same and it's always in the process of change. And the third is integrality, which is a mutual human field process, human and environmental energy field process. Now, if you look at the graphic, you can see that energy fields, pattern, pendimensionality, and openness, the four original, originally postulated principles come together to create homeodynamics. The theory of accelerating change exists within the science of unitary human beings, and it suggests that the only norm is accelerating change. Just like the old saying, the only constant is change. Now this theory helps reframe the idea of the aging process as a process of continuous change. It does the same with the dying process. Dying is a necessary change and we are accelerating towards it. And as you can see in the graphic here, again, energy field, openness, pattern, and pendimensionality all come together to create this one theory. Martha Rogers also talked about the theory of emergence of paranormal phenomena. Now we don't mean like ghosts and aliens and stuff like that, but it's a theory that suggests the ideas or actions labeled as paranormal are actually interconnectivity between energy fields. So when one meditates, he or she is able to elevate his or her mind beyond the physical into something unknown, hard to describe an unknown. That is said to be the energy fields interconnecting, creating this phenomenon. The same can be said about therapeutic touch. So when a person imposes healing just by a touch, then that's energy fields interconnecting with one another. And as you can see in the graphic, once again, energy fields, pendimensionality, pattern, and openness all come together to create this one theory of, you know, of paranormal phenomena. Hello, my name is Marie Bean. What were the assumptions of Rogers' theory? In 1970, Rogers identified five assumptions that are also theoretical as assertions for supporting her model derived from literature on human beings, physics, mathematics, and behavioral sciences. The five basic assumptions of the theory are wholeness, openness, undirectionality, pattern and organization, and lastly, science and thought. Rogers identified each one and explained their meaning as, for wholeness, man is a unified whole, possessing his integrity and manifesting characteristics that are more than and different from the sum of his parts. Secondly, openness, men in the environment are continuously exchanging matter and energy with one another. Thirdly, undirectionality. The life process evolves irreversibly and undirectionally along the space-time continuum. Pattern and organization identify the man and reflect his innovative wholeness. And lastly, for science and thought, man is characterized by the capacity for abstraction and imagery language and thought sensation and emotion. Hello, my name is Alicia White. And through Martha's theory, people were able to develop methods to better understand their patients. Research designs were able to convert a broad range of specialties and use them for different methods in research. <clears throat> for example, Judith Carbon, Carboni, was able to develop the Rogerian process of inquiry from Martha's theory. For example, 
um, her method was evolution centered and focused on the changing configurations of human and environmental field patterns. Theory of unitary human beings can be used in all specialties. Therapeutic touch, humor, dialogue, music, massage, journaling, and much more are of interest to human health and are also of interest in research with this theory. It is important to focus on more than the diagnosis of a patient, but their experiences, perceptions, and expressions. For example, in the textbook, a patient comes in with low energy and is looking down. The nurse noticed the patient's field patterning was a lower frequency energy patterning and discordant with her environmental field. As a result, the nurse was able to provide a more focused care. Hi, my name is Lillian. So let's have a recap of the overview of the theory. As an American nurse and theorist, Roger coined the term unitary human beings in a person's place. She views the individual as an irreducible, individual, and dimensional energy field identified by pattern and manifesting characteristics that are specific to the whole and which one cannot predict from the knowledge of three parts. So what does this all mean? So in other words, as humans, we are always interacting with our environments through the different energy fields of our physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual senses. So through the interactions of the environments in the different energy fields, there is a qualitative change by these interaction relationships. These interactions affect the way that we think, feel, and ultimately heal. So moving on, as nurses, we must look for the harmony of the relationship between the environment and the different energy fields and how they affect the patients. Roger outlines how the person and the environment are open system and states that man and environment are continuously exchanging matter and energy with one another. Therefore, everything and everyone that is within our environment can affect us positively or negatively. So in our nursing practice, it should be concentrated on the unitary human beings and the changes of the energy fields within the humans and their environment. In the nursing practice, we should also compromise on non-invasive treatments such as light music, guided imagery, yoga, or light massage therapies to strengthen the human field's potential. However, more emphasis should also remain on supportive therapy, pain management, and rehab. So here's a visual representation of an overview of the theory. So nursing meta to paradigm encompass person, nursing, environment, and the health, which all affects us as a unit. So if a person is the recipient of the nursing care, it may include individuals, patients, groups, families, and communities. Nursing attributes, characteristics, and actions of the nurse providing care on the behalf of the individual. Environment is defined as the internal and external surroundings that affect the client. And lastly, health is defined as the degree and wellness of the well-being of the client experience. So some questions were thought to have for presentation includes, what are some examples of Roger's theory in the clinical setting or practice? Two, as nurses, how can one incorporate Roger's concept in the care plan of the patient? And lastly, three, is Roger's theory still relevant today? Here are our references in APA setting. And that concludes our presentation. Please let us know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, and we'll be more than happy to answer.